here we have a HP NV17 2014 edition. We're going to open up and explore the insides. So we're going to flip to the back first. And you need to remove your battery if you haven't removed it. So we're going to remove the back cover to reveal a few things. There's one screw holding the back cover, back plate, back cover down. Open this, it will reveal our hard drive, RAM, wireless card, and our second hard drive bay. It's just plastic clips, so just rip it open after you remove the screws. So we're going to remove the DVD drive. This is the wrong screw I'm removing for the DVD drive. It's this screw here. After you remove one screw holding the DVD drive down, you can just drag it out and it comes out. So there's, there's two hard drive bays. And you need to follow the string to remove this cable for the hard drive. Depending on what model you have, you have two strings or for two hard drives. My model only comes with one. There's no there's no plastic clips or anything holding it down, it's just a rubber cage. My hard drive was put in incorrectly, so that's why it took me quite long and I struggled to remove it. Try not to fold your rubber sides because it doubles up and makes it wedge it, wedges it in. Just to show you, the hard drive can go on any side, the front or the back, or the left end or the right. So we're going to remove the RAM, push two sides out to remove the RAM and it pops up. There's two RAM slots, so that's main 16 gigs of RAM max. And this laptop uses DDR3L. To remove the wireless card, we need to remove the antenna cables and remove one screw holding the wireless card down. And the wireless card pops up, and you just need to drag it out. Now we need to remove the back off. To remove the back, we have to remove every screw on the back. So I'm going to point them out now. There's three screws on the DVD drive, and there's three screws around. So just pause it when you need to know where it is. And there's two screws under the feet, the back feet near the LCD screen that I forgot to point out, you'll see later.
So I'm just going to show you the screws now. The last three screws are removed, like really extremely, really small. There's only three of those. See, so the fourth screw job screw they are put there is a common screw. I think that's um, M2.5 times three. And the next one is the M2.5 times five. But yes, there's three, four types of screws. So remember where you remove each screw. You need to also remove all your cables. That's your BIOS cable. And now I'm removing the speaker cable. This is your front, left and right speaker. Also need to remove this. This is your DVD drive connector. You don't need to remove, you just need to remove that one. And I forgot to remove this subwoofer. So now you're going to need a prime tool to pry it open. I'm just going to get my prime tool. Please note, I forgot to remove the last two screws. You'll see me going back to it. So like I said previously, I've got to remove the two screws at the back. The adhesive on the feet are really strong. I need a screwdriver to pry it, actually pry it open, or pry it off. Try not to get the feet dirty, because um, you need to stick them back on. These screws are different again. These are the longest screws there are in the laptop. And there's three of them, two on the feet and one on the side opposite the DVD drive. Here yeah, I just forgot to remove the subwoofer. That's a subwoofer cable. <laughs> so here's the fan graphic card, these black dots are the RAM for the graphic card, 2 gigs, chipset, M starter slot for your SSD, CPU's under there, so we're going to remove 4 screws for the CPU, 4 screws for the graphic card, and 3 screws for the fan. So remember to unplug the fan. And these three screws for the fan actually come off. But the graphic card, four screws for the graphic card and four screws for the CPU don't come off. These the black strips on the fan are actually stick tape so you just can remove them. It doesn't cause any harm. They just use it for cable management to make it nice and neat. So it does normally build up there. When I take it out I'll show you it again. There's eight screws to remove in total to remove the heating. There's no order you need to remove in you, but when you put it back, you need to put it back in order. And every time you remove the heating, you need to replace 
replace and clean the old thermal paste off and don't be cheap on your thermal paste as it's not that expensive you don't use it once in your life well you basically only use it once in your life and it's an important part of your laptop So here you go, we need to clean off the thermal paste. I'm just going to get my towel to do so. You don't need any special liquids or anything to clean off, just rub, rub it off with um, tissue paper or whatever. Try not to use soft tissue as it breaks apart and then falls onto your laptop. Here's my towel. Just give it a rub and it comes off. Just wipe it until you believe it's clean. Or wipe it until you feel like you can't wipe any more off. And that's good enough. With the graphic card and CPU, I try to remove all the old thermal paste off, but the most important part is only the top. The sides aren't that important, so you don't have to concentrate removing the sides off if you can't remove them. Just make sure the tops are clean and remove most of whatever you can on the side if you can't remove it all. So I'm just going to get my thermal paste. Like I tell you, don't be cheap on thermal paste. I'm using Noctua NTH1. This costs $10 Australian and you can probably use it 15 times. So for your CPU, put one rice grain size and do not spread it out in the center. For your graph card, put a half of rice grain on it. I forgot to show you how to remove the CPU, as the CPU can be replaced, so I'm just going to show you how to do it now. You need a Torx screwdriver to remove the CPU for this. Normally, other laptops, a flathead screwdriver is all you need, but with HP, they like to use Torx screwdrivers. So you put your torque screwdriver in and you rotate it half a circle and it comes off. I'm just pointing out this, if you look carefully, you can't see it in here, but there's a triangle there. And there's also a triangle on the middle, a plastic piece as well. That's where I'm pointing to. It's a bit hard for you to see. As the CPU only goes into goes in one way. Just show you here the triangle on the opposite side of it where the pins are. and we're going to turn it half a circle again to close it. Now to put back on the heating. So here, dust normally builds up there. If it's dusty there, it clogs up the pathway. So now we're going to put back the heating. I'm just going to show you numbers on the heatsink now. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll point it out in order so you can see it so you know what you're doing. There's number 1 to 8. So 1, 2. I'm just going to point it out. Okay. okay. There it is. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six. Wrong one. That's not 5. 5, 6, 7, 8. Just follow the way I re screw it in, and you should be fine. 
So to place the heatsink over the top, do not press it down yet <coughs> until you have ensure that it's over the top correctly then you can push it down and screw, screw it in according to the numbers And that's about it. And now we're going to place the fan, uh, fan back. Remember to plug in the fan power. And screwing back the free screws. So there's an MSATA slot here. I'm just going to get my MSATA to show you that it fits. So here you go. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. This disassembly is relatively quite hard as there's many screws. There's diff four different types of screws, so remember to put them separately and remember where each screw goes, as putting this wrong screw in the wrong hole is a bad thing and you don't want that to happen. But besides that, it should be relatively pretty easy. And thanks for watching.